Welcome back. You're still watching Morning Live. Silke Kaiser is a polygraphist and author of a book that gives true accounts of crime stories and events in South Africa titled Gotcha. The read breaks down how criminals think and how perpetrators of these crimes aren't usually the ones that we suspect, but those that live among us and are closer to us than we think. Using polygraphy as her own investigating techniques, the book outlines crimes such as home invasions, hijackings, farm attacks, heists, rapes and uh, many other criminal acts while well, she now joins us in studio to tell us more about uh, what is contained in this very thrilling and insightful read. Silka, welcome to Morning Love. It's so great to have you. Thank you very much indeed. Now, off air we were chatting and I asked yes. you a question about whether the saying charity begins at home really does speak to people who commit crimes and how crimes are committed. No. The, ma the major motivation of crime, crime across the world, and research has proved this over and over again, is the lack of a strong father figure in childhood. If you look at jails across the world, and if you had to interview every one of those people, most of them, over 90%, would say they've had a lack of a strong father figure. On Mother's Day, those cards, fl Mother's Day cards fly out of the prisons, but the Father's Day cards don't do as well. And so one would think that because mother figures are obviously the nurturers, they're usually the ones that, you know, try and fill the gap of the absent father figure, mm -hmm. one would think that the children being raised would, you know, want, want to keep that love, hold on to that warmth and not go against that. The fathers, because they are the disciplinarians, they teach their children impulse control. Criminals across the world have a low impulse control. Sure, that is so insightful. Now, now, the book really gives us insight into stories of people who've experienced crime, and you've obviously tried to help them, um, you know, deal with those experiences. Yes. Why was it so important for you to, to share stories like this, to write a book like Gotcha? I work as a polygraphist, so which means that I do polygraph testing. I do voice polygraphs. There's two different types of polygraph. The one that I do is voice. And... With my stories, people started saying to me, write your book. And one day I was asked to give a public talk about my work, which I did. And somebody came over to me and said to me, write your book. So I did. And I wrote it and I sent it to the editor and he said to me, it's crap. Because I wrote it in factual form and I called a crime in South Africa. He said, you need to write it from your personal perspective and bring your own feelings into the stories. So I speak about my banting diet, which clearly failed, and <laughs> the stars in the sky. But I wrote it the way that I experienced my work and you know I do a lot of farm attacks which means that I go and polygraph um, to see who is involved in the planning and in the farm attacks and who will stand to gain something and that really gave me a lot of insight into the way that crime is committed in South Africa because a lot of gangs a lot of crimes are committed by gangs and there's a strict hierarchy within those gangs and that would be for farm attacks, hijackings, cash in transit heights, and also in the urban areas, home invasions and home robberies. Hmm. And another thing that I want to mention, which I do speak about in my book, is that the belief in witchcraft runs its crime throughout, sorry, the belief in witchcraft runs its thread throughout crime in South Africa. Sure. Let's talk about perpetrators being people that look like you and myself. 100%. Uh, people that we naturally trust. Um, they're not sticking out. They don't have uh, ugly scars on their faces. How does the human brain kind of balance that out? Because I look at you and I automatically trust you because you look like a warm person, but you can turn around and be a scammer. Yes, I could be. How but do I'm we not. reconcile that in our heads? <laughs> So the criminals are very, very clever and they're incredibly sly. They will dress the part to fit into society. This is a conscious decision. Furthermore, human beings, we look at the world from a perspective of the way we are in the world. So if we ourselves are honest and trustworthy, we expect other people to be the same. And because at Sotsi, to use that word, we expect them to wear maybe a hat, dirty clothing, etc., it's often not true. Hmm. Uh, just very quickly, Silka, before we wrap up, your advice to South Africans where crime is concerned. H how do we deal with crime? 
as individuals experiencing those home invasions, experiencing car thefts and hijackings, uh, how do we as a society find a, a place to feel safe in a, in, in, in a country that feels unsafe? Well, the criminal justice system is in a disarray, and I'm going to say it because of the crap police force. Dockets get lost, documentation inside the dockets also disappear, and therefore the dockets are not up to date, and that is why the magistrates cannot give the appropriate sentences because the dockets are not up to date. And know who you employ, know that person. Mm, lots of vetting that we have to do. Look at the kidnapping we've just had of that little baby Eden in Alberton. Silka, thank you very much for this phenomenal book. And I truly urge uh, all our viewers to go out and get this book. Uh, well, that is uh, Silka who wrote a book titled Gotcha. Uh, she was talking to us uh, about uh, the read that she's offering us and what takes us inside the mind of criminals and into some of the most common crimes committed in South Africa that she has uncovered. Some for us to go back to the morning live stage for yet.